Assalamu alaikum everyone. I am Farhana Hussain, your science teacher. Hope you all are doing well. We know that due to corona pandemic, the whole world is struggling. In these situations, most of the schools of the country have started online classes. So, welcome to the online classes of Muhammadpur Preparatory School and College. You must take advantage of this opportunity as well. We will continue our lessons through these online classes. It will help us to cover the syllabus. Today, I am going to talk about chapter 8 which is about universe. I hope you all will give proper attention throughout the class. So, let's start. At first, we have to know what is universe. The universe is made up of everything that exists including galaxies, stars, planets, space, all matter and energy. So you get the definitions of the universe. Then how big is the universe? You know how big is the universe? Yes. No one knows for sure how big the universe is. Scientists believe that the universe is expanding with the time. Please follow page 52. When you look up at the night sky, you can see countless numbers of stars in the space from the earth with naked eyes. If you use a telescope, you can see these objects more clearly. What is telescope? A telescope makes far away objects seem larger. It helps us see further into space. Scientists use telescope to research on planets, stars and galaxy. There is a box. This box has some informations. Speed of light, the distance of the moon from the earth, the distance of the sun from the earth and how can we calculate the time speed of the light is 3 lakhs kilometer per second distance of the moon from the earth is 3 lakhs 84,400 kilometer distance of the sun from the earth is 15 crore kilometer so you get the informations then you can find out or you can calculate the time now if you look at the question we have here how long does light take to reach earth from the moon to find it out we have to divide the distance of earth from the moon by the speed of light by doing the calculation we can find out that uh, the time needed for the light to reach out from the moon is 1.3 seconds. Now the next question is how long does light take to reach out from the sun? To find it out we have to divide the distance of earth from the sun by the speed of light. By doing the calculation, we can find out that the time needed for the light to reach earth from the sun is 500 seconds. To convert it into minutes, we divide it by 60 and we get 8.3 minutes or 8 minutes. If you go to page 53, you can see a diagram which shows the distance between the sun and the earth and the distance between the earth and the moon. Have you seen the diagram? Yes. If we are able to travel as fast as light, how long would it take to go across the Milky Way galaxy? It would take 1,30,000 years. Now, 
वट इज द मिल्की वे मिल्की वे इज वन ऑफ द गैलेक्सीज इन द यूनिवर्स डू यू नो वट इज गैलेक्सी अ गैलेक्सी इज ए ह्यूज ग्रुप ऑफ स्टार्स एंड सिस्टम ऑन एवरेज हाउ मेनी स्टार्स आर देयर इन ए गैलेक्सी देयर आर अराउंड टेन थाउजेंड क्रोर स्टार इन ए गैलेक्सी हाउ डू उ गेट टू नो दिस इनफरमेशन एकॉर्डिंग टू द साइंटिस्ट सर एडिंगटन उइ गेट टू नो अबाउट दिस इनफरमेशन लेट्स मूव फॉरवर्ड वर्ड इज एस्ट्रोनॉमी एस्ट्रोनॉमी इज द स्टाडी ऑफ द यूनिवर्स सच एज स्टार्स प्लैनेट्स एंड स्पेस Which technologies are used by scientists to study the universe? Telescope Improved telescope Space telescope And also the scientists have built the space stations Galileo invented an improved telescope that allowed him to see far into space. Using the telescope, he proved that the planets actually revolved around the sun. You got a lot of informations about universe from page 52 and 53. Now, I am going to discuss motions of earth. Please go to page 54. At first, we have to know what is axis, rotation, revolution and orbit. Page 54. An axis is the imaginary line through the center of an object. Earth's axis goes through the north and south poles. Earth's axis is tilted at some degree or 23.5 degree while revolving the sun earth also spins or rotates on its axis like a spinning top then rotation the spinning motion of the earth on its axis is called earth's rotation it takes 23 hours and 56 minutes for the earth to complete one full rotation on its axis which is measured as one day then orbit the path that earth and other planets move around the sun is called orbit and revolution the orbital motion of the earth around the sun is is called revolution it takes 365 days and 6 hours for the earth to complete one trip around the sun so you know about the axis rotation orbit and revolution now see the question how does the earth move Earth moves in two ways by rotations and revolutions so you get the answer how does the earth move now from this discussions you can also find out the differences between the rotations and revolutions now i will talk about the causes of day and night The earth is spinning on its axis once every 24 hours. That is why the sun rises in the morning and sets in the evening every day. One side of the earth is facing the sun 
whereas the other side of the earth is not facing the sun. The part of the earth that is facing the sun has daytime. On the other hand, the part of the earth that is facing away from the sun has night. Now I'll talk about sunrise and sunset. The sun seems rising in the east in the morning and then sets in the west as the day ends. This is because the earth is spinning on its axis from west to east. As earth rotates, the sun appears to move from east to west across the sky. Now I am going to talk about season. You know, we have six seasons in a year. They are the summer, rainy season, autumn, late autumn, winter and the spring in a year. Let's have a look at the diagram, page 58. We have on screen, it shows the causes of season change. The tilt of the earth axis and its orbit around the sun causes seasons. As the earth revolves around the sun, different parts of the earth tilt towards or away from the sun. Now, how does summer happen? When the northern hemisphere tilts toward the sun, it is summer there. In summer, the sunlight shines more directly on the northern half of the earth, giving more energy. This causes the temperatures to rise and the period of daytime to be longer. Opposite seasons occurs in the southern hemisphere and it is winter there. Now, how does the winter happen? When the northern hemisphere tilts away from the sun, it is winter there. In winter, sunlight heats this part of the earth less directly. The temperature is lower and the period of daytime is shorter but the period of night gets longer. Now, from this diagram you know how summer and winter happens. After this, we can get to know about other seasons from the next diagram. Have you seen the diagram? Yes, I start from December. Summer is at south of the equator. Winter is at north of the equator. The sun shines directly on the southern hemisphere and indirectly on the northern hemisphere. Now March. Fall is at south of the equator. Spring is at north of the equator. The sun shines equally on the southern and northern hemisphere. During June, winter is at south of the equator. Summer is at north of the equator. The sun shines directly on the northern hemisphere and indirectly on the southern hemisphere. Now September. Spring south spring is at south of the equator. Fall is at north of the equator. The sun shines equally on the southern and northern hemisphere. So from these discussions, you know about the season and the season change. Now I am going to explain page 59, the phases of the moon. What do you mean by the phases of the moon? The changing shapes of the bright part of the moon that we see are called the phases of the moon. Now I am going to talk about motion of the moon. The moon is the only satellite of the earth. You know what is satellite? A satellite is an object that revolves around a planet. The moon rotates on its axis once every 28 days and it also moves around the earth once every 28 days. The moon does not produce its own light. Instead, it reflects the sun's light. Half of the moon is always lighted by the sun. 
but as the moon orbits around the earth the area of the lighted side facing the earth changes this changes causes the phases of the moon we can only see the lighted side of the moon when we can see full of the side lighted this is called full moon when we can't see any of the lighted side this is called a new moon now i am explaining the phases of the moon have you seen the diagram yes i start from new moon when we cannot see any lighted part this is the new moon that is it is fully dark after new moon comes waxing phases waxing means increasing the light when we can see some lighted part like crescent shape this is waxing crescent moon after waxing crescent comes first quarter in this phase we can see half lighted part and after first quarter we can see more than half lighted part and this is waxing givers and after waxing givers we can see the full lighted part this is full moon after full moon the light decreases this is waning phases and when we cannot see some lighted part like crescent shape this is waning givers then comes the last quarter in this phase half of the part gets dark then comes one crescent moon more than half of the moon gets dark in this way the moon repeats its phases every 28 days so we got to learn from this chapter what is universe what causes day and night how does the season change the phases of the moon and the rotation of the moon thank you so much for your attention stay home stay safe hoping a good health and good days of you all